Hey everybody, this is my Black Ghost Knife Fish tank and recently when I was shooting a video and talking about this tank I had to kind of raise my eyebrows. I wasn't quite sure exactly what was going on in here. I know I need to get in here and do some maintenance and clean up some of the uh, growth that's going on in there and remove some of the algae. I even need to skim the surface of the water but the thing that puzzled me was the plants if you'll look at my temple plants over here, what a lot of these really scraggly, skeletonized leaves are, if you see this uh, sort of thicker, almost bamboo-like stalk, it's not bamboo-like at all, but it sort of looks that way, uh, that is the trunk of the temple plant, and you can see the abrupt end just above that little uh, root that's growing out of there, and we'll get to that in a moment. So if you look at the leaves on that, they're all sort of shredded and skeletonized, and I'm not really sure why that is. If you look at this one here, the leaves look pretty rough because they have so much growth on them, uh, and this in particular right here looks like the cyanobacteria, so I need to get in there and do something about that. But all the other growth on there is just normal, you know, just grunge that you get, aquatic growth, uh, off walks if you will. I'm not exactly sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I have any German viewers out there that are wincing when I say that, I apologize. Um, but it's biofilm. It's whatever you want to call it. It's just that growth you get on stuff that lives underwater. That's not the same as what's happening to the leaves on this side of it. So I was scratching my head as to what it was all about, and one of my viewers made an excellent suggestion. That plant was actually growing emergent. It was growing well up and out of the water. The leaves that were out of the water were actually starting to change color already. And if you looked at it closely, you would have been able to see that it was already starting to branch off. Every node uh, intersection had growth coming out of it and the nodes were really tight. So it was definitely getting tons of light and of course the atmospheric uh, CO2 and oxygen it would have access to would just, you know, that the growth explosion would be above the surface of the water. And so they were suggesting that possibly because the plant was doing this and undergoing this change, was it possibly shedding its underwater leaves and focusing its energy on growing emergent? And that just, that sounds like absolutely spot on exactly what we're looking at. And so I got in there and I trimmed the top of it off. I don't know how much of a shock um, that's going to put the plant through. We're going to have to wait and see, I guess. Um, it's a pretty durable plant. The temple plant is, you know, it's pretty hardy, like I say. So I think with all of the uh, root growth I've got, and I mean, it goes down behind the pieces of wood there, and that's a well-established plant. It's been in this tank for years. So we might see... Um, some, you know, it would almost be the equivalent of transplant shock is how it would probably look. And a lot of the leaves might fall off and we might see some of them, you know, swirling around the tank or whatever. But we'll see. It won't be tragic if it does, you know, die uh, because of it. I do have uh, this growth right here. I honestly don't know if that's the same plant. It's probably not, but it could be. Uh, it could be one main root mass down here. You know, it's again, it's been so many years since I've put the plants in this tank. I couldn't really tell you exactly where what root is and what plants coming uh, out of which root or whatever. But what I did with the piece we cut out of there was I'm trying something different. We will come over here and not look at this tank because that's a disaster right now. We will look at my waterfall tank. And so here is the piece of temple plant that I cut out. And you can see how different the vegetation looks that was emergent. The water line was pretty much about right here on it. And all of this section here was growing up and out of the water. So it's a little burnt up at the top where it was pressed up against the glass. But you can see it's got all those different red uh, tones in it and the reddish colors in there. Now. What we're going to see happen to this piece is we're going to see that shrivel up and look like it's going to die back. And I think it will recover, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, this is something I just threw in there. And the reason we're going to see it die back is because where it was before, even though it was growing emergent and it was exposed to all of the atmospheric air, so you'd get a lot of uh, transpiration 
Uh, transpiration is basically like evaporation, but as the uh, uh, moisture evaporates off the surface of the leaves, it pulls water up through the plant, and then you get more evaporation, and that water, that cycle of water being pulled up through the plant and then evaporating off the leaves is called transpiration. And in the tank, the whole plant and the whole root system, which we just discussed, could have been a very large root system down underneath of that whole uh, cave system, it had all of that taking in water. So even though water is going to evaporate very quickly off of these leaves, it had just this massive pump that could pump water back into those leaves as fast as it could evaporate out of it. Now, however, it simply has a cut end and I cut it below where some roots were beginning to develop. So it's got a very, very small uh, root system on it already and then a cut end. So I do have the cut end down in water and I do have the roots down in water, but I can already tell you there's just no way it's gonna be able to pump enough water through that to keep up with the amount of evaporation we're gonna see. Now I could probably get in there and trim some of the leaves back. Um, I've always been reluctant to do that though. I tend to believe the more I cut on it and the more I open it up, the more I'm potentially opening it up to infection. Um, you know, the more damage, the more stress I'm putting it under. I'm just going to tuck it in there and let it do its thing and see what happens. Again, we might see what will appear to be transplant shock. We'll see some of the leaves die back. We'll probably see them shrivel up. And then in a little while, we're going to see a new thing coming up right here. And we'll probably wonder what it is until I realize, oh, that's right. That's that, you know, that temple plant I stuck in there. It finally came back. So that's, probably, that's kind of what I'm anticipating. But we'll see. You know, we, we might get some different results from that. Uh, all together. I don't really know. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but there you go. There's my little uh, update for all I've done in the fish room today. And while we're right here at the waterfall tank, we got one of my little cool sculpins sitting out right there in plain view. That one's easy to spot. So let me try to zoom in rather than put the camera closer because I'm getting a lot of glare here. And they're just so neat looking. Really, really cool looking fish. I don't know why I'm zooming back out. There we go. Such an interesting fish. All right, everybody. Let me have a look right here since we're squatting down to ground level. We'll have a little glimpse around my red claw crab tank. I don't see anybody out and about. I do see them sometimes in the morning. I'll come down and turn the light on and there'll be a crab sitting there uh, that scurries away real quick. I'll probably get in here and change the filter on this pump again. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. This is how I get to the pump. You can see the hose is right there. And then a lot of times I'll have a crab sitting right under here. Yep, see the one right there against the... So I think that is... Oh, you know what? I'm not even sure now. The front claw that I can see is torn off and the other one's behind the hose. So I don't know whether that's a male or a female. And I couldn't tell you whether it was the original one from the uh, that's been in there for a while now or if it was the newer ones I put in uh, a little more recently. But there's that one. Now the other ones are probably who knows where. I don't see anybody back in that corner. And I can't get down here myself because we're a couple inches off the floor. I'd literally have to lie down, but I can hold the camera down here. Can you see anybody back there? I don't. All right. That's the only crab I saw. So it's possible that maybe they could have gotten out uh, down at this end, but I really don't think that that's the case, and I haven't seen uh, any dead crabs. And speaking of which, let me throw this one out there too. I've been meaning to mention this for a while, and I keep forgetting about it, and I know this video is getting a little long and rambly at this point. But found this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Um... You know, that's a mummy. It's completely desiccated. It's dried out. There's no moisture left in this at all. So it is on the shelf over here with my other one and with one of my other red clawed crabs that I found. 
people ask me about stuff like this all the time where these come from and that's where it is I find little stuff like that and I don't know why but I just keep them uh, a lot of people have pointed out my little dried up hatchet fish their hatchet fish that I found on the floor you know back there doing a water change or something like that but I did find that crayfish on the floor I don't know a couple of weeks ago but it was in a place that I have not really dug around in um, for a long time, a couple of years probably. So I have no idea how long that crayfish could have been back there. I've had a lot of crayfish in this basement over the years that have vanished and I've never seen again. And so that could have been the one out of this tank or it could have been one from some other time. But I did find a crayfish recently and we still, I've just, I've not seen the crayfish that was in this tank in a very long time now. So I suspect that there's no longer uh, crayfish in this tank. And finally, I will add on that note that the sculpins are still in there and doing well. And every time I've had a crayfish in a tank with sculpins, the sculpins never lasted very long. And I always chalked that up to the crayfish, but was never sure. And now again, this is still anecdotal, but it is more anecdotal evidence that sort of supports that theory that the uh, crayfish are the ones that were in there eating those bottom dwelling sculpins, which would make sense. So there you go. Uh, there's my little sort of update from the two tanks where I've switched over a little bit of the plants. And I do have some bulbs that are starting to come up, as I mentioned before. And uh, of course, you know, the Creeping Jenny at some point will start flowering. I'll probably have to figure out what causes the Creeping Jenny to flower, whether that's a, a photo period uh, thing where I'd have to either reduce the amount of light or increase the amount of light or what that is. But at some point, we're going to start to see some flowers on some of this stuff. And this is going to be fantastic, especially when that Creeping Jenny flowers because it has just absolutely vibrant, beautiful yellow golden flowers all over it. Uh, and the more light it gets, the more golden it looks. So it's doing, uh, you know, it's doing pretty well. It's getting a lot of light there. So we should have some pretty exciting, um, you know, video coming up here in the near future. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss any of that. So thanks again for watching this one. Don't forget this here is my waterfall tank and I will see you real soon on the next one.